Welcome to the Echoes of Faith podcast on the Living Bible Hub Network. I am your host, Sherry T., and you have just entered in to our Tuesday night family prayer call. I pray that you are encouraged and blessed by the words that are spoken here today. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you once again for this evening that we come together to love on each other and lift up the name of Jesus. There's no greater hope than we know, and that's that's to know that we are in your divine presence. We give you the honor, the praise, and the glory for it as you touch us from the top to the bottom, continue to transform our hearts in a marvelous way that we might continue to go out into a nation and share the goodness of of who you are to us. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. The Believer for Life Christian Clothing Brand is now on Amazon.com forward slash Believer for Life. Once again, family, I'm so glad to be coming to you with tonight's devotion. Y'all know how I like to do it. A family that prays together stays together. So as we have already enjoyed the presence of an almighty God, I thank him right now for completing the work that he has begun in all of us. Our scripture reading for tonight will come from the book of Isaiah chapter nine, verses one through six. uh, Reading from the Christian standard Bible. Nevertheless, the gloom of the distressed land will not be like that of the former times when he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Nephitim. But in the future, he will bring honor to the way of the sea, to the land east of Jordan and to the Galilee of nations. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. A light has dawned on those living in the land of darkness. You have enlarged the nation and increased its joy. The people have rejoiced before you as they rejoice at harvest time and as they rejoice when dividing spoils. For you have shattered their oppressive yoke and the rod rod on their shoulders, the staff of their oppressor, just as you did on the day of Midian. For every trampling boot of battle and the bloody garments of war will be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child will be born for us, a son will be given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, and Prince of Peace. May our Heavenly Father bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Advent, a season of hope, joy, peace, and love. Therefore, let us prepare our hearts as we celebrate the birth of Jesus and his second coming. If I had to put a title to this text, and I did, it would be a season of hope, embracing the light. As I pondered on this text, I began to think about a quote that I read by Carl Reiner. And he reminds us to give thanks and glory to God. He simply said, every year we celebrate the holy season of Advent. Oh God, every year we pray those beautiful prayers of longing and waiting and sing those lovely songs of hope and promise. I believe that quote sums up what Isaiah is presenting to us in scripture today. Before I dive into the text, let me go ahead and make it set the context to understanding why the writer would start chapter nine off with the word nevertheless. And in order for me to do that, I had to flip back over to chapter 8 to see what what was being said or spoken to the children of Israel through the prophet Isaiah. As I moved through the text, I came across verse 17 
through 21. And I thought they would give me a little bit more understanding of what Isaiah was going through. And he picks up chapter nine and he says, nevertheless, which means something was going on before he changed the attitude. He changed the scenario. He changed the, the, the script. He changed the environment. Over in chapter 8, starting at verse 17, he says, I will wait for the Lord who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob. I will wait for him. Here I am with the children of the children the Lord has given me to be signs and wonders in Israel for the Lord of armies who dwells on the Mount of Zion. When they say to you, inquire of the medians and the spiritists who chirp and mutter. Shouldn't the people inquire of their God? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? Go to God's instruction and testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, there will be no dawn for them. They will wander through the land, dejected and hungry. When they are famished, they will become enraged and looking upward, will curse their king and their God. They will look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and the gloom of affliction, and they will be driven into thick darkness. Again, I read chapter 8, 17 through 21, just to get a feel, a context on why Isaiah turns around and says, nevertheless, Nevertheless, he says, but I can see why he said nevertheless. So as I pondered again on this text and continue to move through it, I began to develop and see that there are three things that Isaiah is telling us in this text, but they literally stem from what was going on in chapter 8, verses 17 through 21. According to the culture of that time, it was customary to appeal to the dead for the living. I'm like Isaiah. I asked the question, how can a dead man help you? Isaiah here is warning the church to, about seeking the guidance of mediums, mediums and familiar spirits. When we find ourselves in despair and anxiety and fear, y'all know how we do. All you got to do is turn on the TV sometimes. Or matter of fact, you ain't got to turn on TV. Just drive down the street. And you got psychics in buildings. They, they got their offices, their office spaces. They got big signs out there, psychic reading for $10. Or sometimes when we have come into a place of despair and depression and, and we can't seem to hear from heaven like we want to, the direction is off, we begin to seek after other things. And here, Isaiah was speaking to the church, the children of Israel, giving them a warning. Don't, don't do this because if you seek after them, there will be no light in you. If you seek after them, they will, there will be no light in you. I think he says it like this. They will look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and the gloom of affliction, and they will be driven into a thick darkness. He gives a warning to the church. And after he gives that warning, he turns to chapter nine and, and he gives hope. He gives hope for what is to come as he reveals God's plan of redemption for humanity and the promise of the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's why I like when he starts off with, nevertheless, nevertheless presents a hope. Nevertheless says there's something coming. Nevertheless says look in another direction. Nevertheless says turn back to your God and, and follow his instructions and, and, and live out his testimonies. Nevertheless tells us that God is still with us. Nevertheless tells us that God is not forsaken us. Nevertheless tells us that, that God still has a plan for those who will just trust and believe in him. Advent. 
a season of hope, love, joy, peace. When you find yourself in despair, anxiety, and fear, and, and we all have found ourselves there, none of us have been exempt. We should always seek the one who will always hear our prayer and can help us in the times of trouble. We should be appealing to God who is alive forevermore. There are the three things that, that will guide us through this Advent season as we look at the text. The first thing we'll see is that we must embrace the light, not just any light, the true light. Jesus said, I am the light, I am the way. A light will always allow us to see what's ahead of us. Isaiah unravels the profound warning against seeking the guidance of, of, of psychics and mediums and spirits. But in his timeless wisdom, he urges us to follow God's instructions and embrace the dawn of the divine light. This is what he was saying in, in, in chapter 8, verses 17 through 21. Embrace the truth of, of what God has given Go to God's instruction and his testimony. We have been given the word from Genesis to Revelation. Promise after promise, fulfillment after fulfillment. God is always showing his plan. And if that don't work for you, just begin to look back over your life. And as we enter into this last stage of 2023, look how God has brought you from January 1 all the way till today. showing his love and his mercy towards you. See, I know ain't nobody on this line tonight seeking psychics and mediums and spirits, but you might run across somebody in your circle that has a need to fulfill and get over their pain and anger and hurt and despair. And they might tell you, well, I think I'm going to call the 900 number. That's when you step in and give them the same warning. No, 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 no. Don't seek after that. Seek after the guiding light in this season of life. Seek after the, 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 the light that shines bright in all of us. The light that has been given to us. The second thing I, I noticed that Isaiah was saying here, with, which brings that prophetic shift, is you're going to go from darkness to dawn. See, in chapter 8, it was gloom and doom. It was darkness. In chapter 9, he says, nevertheless, and he brings in the hope, the joy, and the peace, and the light of God begins to pr prevail in our lives. It's, it's a prophetic shift for sure. Isaiah's prophecy reveals the contrasting transformation when we follow the instruction. We've all been there. We've been in distress, but we reached out to God's word and began to follow those instructions. And that distress is now turns into joy. We were in a place of darkness and now that darkness has become light. Isaiah walks us through this symbolic journey from the land of deep darkness to the dawn of the great light, echoing hope and liberation. The third thing Isaiah reveals to us is that our Redeemer is here. He reveals who Jesus Christ is to us. We witness this intricate tapestry in Isaiah 8 and 9 as we decode the prophetic message that he's fulfilled bringing to us, showcasing the consequences of spiritual misdi misdirection, but then bringing us into that glorious transformation that awaits you and I. He reminds us 
that God brought joy, increased joy to the people. People that were walking in darkness have seen a great light. Can I get an amen on that? Because I know we all are, 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 are testimonies of that. People that were walking in darkness have seen a great light. The light is dawned on the living in the land of darkness. How dark is our land today? But the light has dawned upon the living. Again, God is showing that I am with my children. I am with those who believe. And then he speaks of this. He says, For us a child will be born, a son will be given, the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, and Prince of Peace. Our Redeemer is revealed. Isaiah does a marvelous job of, of, of setting the tone and letting us to look, look forward because this is he who will come. A glorious transformation that awaits you and I. Advent season, a season that reminds us of hope, peace, and joy and love that God has revealed in all of our hearts through the power of the Holy Spirit as we prepare for the promise and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ and his second coming. So fam, I just want to encourage you all tonight that you continue to walk in the way of righteousness. Continue to look towards heaven from which cometh your help. Continue to trust and believe in the power of God's word. Because what God has already done, he will continue to do. What he has already promised is coming to pass. We know it's so because the Holy Spirit has spoken to our hearts tonight. So may the joy of the Lord keep you. May his peace be upon you. May his face shine in you, through you, and, and with you. As we go through this season and celebrate. Our King, our Lord, our Savior, our Deliverer, Jesus. In his name, I pray. Amen. a word from our sponsor, we will continue with praise and worship. Have you ever experienced negative thoughts of depression, loneliness, or scarcity? Unlock the peace from within by texting BELIEVE, B-E-L-I-E-V-E, to 877-670-1975. And receive our weekly words of encouragement. Again, text BELIEVE to 
Thank you for listening to the Echoes of Faith podcast on the Living Bible Hub Network. Partner with us. Like, subscribe, support. Visit our website, livingbiblehub.com. Until next time, peace, love, and blessing.